Okay, I realized I had not done a lightweight tutorial for a while, so before I go on the Thanksgiving break, I'll try to get a short one out to you. Uh, this is how to use normal maps in Lightwave. A normal map is sort of like a bump map on steroids. So what I'm going to show you here is a, uh, a neat little tool called Texture Maker, <clears throat> which you can download. I think it's about $99. And you can use Texture Maker for a variety of different things, creating seamless textures. <clears throat> Excuse me, seamless textures out of uh, source images, you can create a variety of different uh, textures using uh, fractal generators, noise generators and stuff. It's it's pretty useful. Uh, I'm going to create a normal map from an existing image. Let's go to my stone images folder here. I have a bunch of stone images. All right, and let's get something that's going to show up pretty well here. All right. We'll get this one with the uh, rock face. All right. So now we have a rock face here, and uh, I'm going to add this to a, I have a plane here in my Lightwave scene that doesn't have a texture on it yet. So um, we already have an image here. I'm going to go ahead and create a normal map from this. It's very, very easy. Go to File, uh, Export Normal Map. Okay. And then you can go ahead and hit Preview, and when you do that, you'll see what it would look like if this normal map were applied to a scene. You see this little yellow ball here. It's, it's kind of going off screen right now. But there's a little yellow ball, and what that is is it's simulating a light source. So these normal maps are used in, for example, video game scenes. You see the low light, and you can see it's not too noticeable here, but you can see the uh, kind of the edges being highlighted as the low light goes around. Okay, So once you've done that, you'll see this kind of pink image, and that is the normal map. And what that's going to do is <clears throat> perturb the, the surface so that it looks like there's a lot of detail and geometry in there. All right, so if I want to save this, I'll just hit select, and then I'm going to save this as normal, all right? And I'll hit OK. All right, I'm done with that part of it. Okay, so now we'll go in here to our scene, and um, I'll go to my camera view. I've got texture shaded solid mode on. Uh, now I'll just hit F5 to bring up the uh, mid, uh, surface editor, and then I'll just start adding the uh, colors and stuff. So let's go and load the image, the color image that we had before. That rock face, there it is. All right. Now you can see it's facing on the wrong plane, so I'll hit select Y, and now it's it's tiling too many times, so I'll hit automatic sizing. All right, and uh, I'm gonna copy that. I might wanna use it later. All right, so let's go ahead and render this frame. All right. Okay, so that's what it looks like with just the image and as you can see it looks flat alright so now let's add the uh, let's add the normal map uh, we have to enable our edit nodes and we click on that oh I already have a normal map in here I have to delete this okay so um, you go in your edit nodes and then under add edit 2d textures normal map alright and double click on it and you get a image file requester and I'm gonna load that normal map Right. and it should be this one. There it is, their pink image. All right, I'm um, gonna hit Y for the uh, plane and automatic sizing so it matches the dimensions of the other image. And then just connect the normal to the normal of the surface. All right, and then we'll render again. Okay, so, so now if you go in here under layer, if you kept your uh, your preview window open, you'll be able to swap between these two layers. So as you can see, this image has more depth than this image. This image doesn't have the normal map. This image does. And as you can see, it's got sort of, you can see what looks like actual shadows where there is no geometry to cast the shadows. It makes it look like there are actually shadows being cast on here. All right, so let's add some more realism. We'll go in and, and we'll take that layer that we had copied before and we'll add it to the specular. We'll replace that layer with the specular layer. You know what, this image won't give us as good a image. I have a uh, version that I had created a black and white image of. This image will give us much more uh, pop than this image will because this is a color image and this is a black and white one. This should have much more effect. All right, so automatic sizing. I'll copy that one. And I'll do the same thing with bump. Oops. All right. I'll use that. And then I'll go ahead and 
I will, oh, I hope I didn't close my window out. I might have done that yet. Continue, okay. So, well, you can't see too much of a difference here, but let's see. When uh, there's better lighting in the scene, you should see the specular highlights a lot more. But uh, as you can see, there's a big difference between these two images here. Uh, the one image has much more depth and, and feel to it. And if I had different lighting, um, time to do different lighting, then I should be able to see much more of an increase in a realistic look to it. Uh, let me see if I can um, open up my Zergling. I, I created a new uh, and improved Zergling here for my uh, StarCraft fan film. And this guy was done in a 3D coat, that program that I showed you before. And so, as you can see, this Zergling here is... Uh, I've already animated him doing a little test animation. I'm going to uh, move the camera in a bit closer so you can see all the bumps and stuff that this uh, normal map will, will create. I'm going to select him and hit F5, and let's go to, let's see, where is, is it the default material, I believe? So as you can see here, it's kind of hard to see this image, but uh, these are images that were, the color map and the specularity map and everything like that was created inside of 3D Coat. So I used 3D Coat to, to uh, draw the textures onto this guy and it was very easy to do. Um, I'll render a frame here with this guy. All right, there's a lot of aliasing and, and soft shadows and stuff that need to go on, so this might take uh, a few seconds here to render. But uh, what I've done here is, when I exported the uh, model with all the textures from 3D Coat, I got all the color textures, I got the bump textures, I got the specular textures, and then it also created the normal map for me. And it was that same kind of pinkish looking uh, color map. So when you look at this guy, you'll see that there's a lot of extra detail uh, around here, for example. And I didn't spend a lot of time working on this guy. Uh, I should have really spent a lot more time painting him. But as you can see here on his neck and, and on his leg over here especially, you can see that mottled kind of texture like a bump map, but it looks much more detailed than a regular bump map. So if we were to go in and hit F5 and click on my edit nodes and uh, you see here's the uh, here's the normal map. It doesn't look like much here, but uh, I'm going to disconnect that so that we don't have a normal map now. And now let's render another frame. And you should see a pretty uh, marked difference. This is a bit better of a, an example than the first one I showed you, but the first one was much easier to to show, uh, you know, how to exactly set it up and stuff, so. But this is a real world example that you'll be able to look at. Alright. Move my mic here. Okay. You can already see that there's not as much detail as the other image. I'll just wait until this image comes up and, and there we go. Alright, so now you can see an extreme uh, difference here between the two images. I hope that one is... Unfortunately, that other image did not stay up. So, um, if you remember what the other one looked like, I'll go ahead and, and mention that while... Let me reconnect that. All right. And uh, render the frame. Let's see, where did my image go? Okay. But now you can see here, the model texture is back, and in the other image, there was really uh, there was really nothing. It, it looked like a smooth, flat object. So you can take a simple this this object in a lightweight modeler is not all that complex of an object. You know you have to keep the polygon count low so that you can animate it very well and have hundreds of these guys on the screen at once. Let's see how this is going to end up when it animates here. Okay, hopefully, yep, I can see the other one. Okay, so now you can see very very quickly and easily the difference that a normal map can make to your render. And uh, so if you can create a normal map and have the time to, to add that onto your, your scene uh, to things like rock textures and, and creatures and stuff like that, even a human face, you'll, you'll see that you'll get, uh, you'll get a lot more detail. Uh, so I hope that this will help you out. I remember um, 3D Coat creates these pretty well and uh, Texture Maker uh, creates these with no problem at all, plus it has other items to it uh, that makes it very useful. I would get Texture Maker if you're into uh, 3D animation.